Hi guys, it's Joe here from Rufio. Welcome to the channel. If this is your first time here, welcome aboard. You should definitely consider hitting subscribe and the notification bell before you realize how fucking garbage this content is. And if this is not your first time on the channel, you're a bit of a glutton for punishment. Seriously, reevaluate your life. Now, today's video, we are taking a look at the absolute glass cannon that is Danger Gren Marju. This is a deck that I've taken to regionals before and it was, well, exactly what you'd expect, the ultimate glass cannon. In the games I did in Brick, I absolutely mullered my opponent, they had zero ability to play. Mostly because they didn't get enough turns to actually fucking do anything. And the games where I bricked, uh, yeah, it was less than favourable. But there are some people who just want to rock up at events, whether it's locals, whether it's regionals, mostly because they're there to see the bodies, and this is the perfect kind of deck for you. You go in, your round is over in 15 minutes regardless, you've got time to go and get some chips, a fucking sandwich, a drink, a coke, a Red Bull, some halloumi, go to Nando's, go to Subway, whatever the hell you bloody like with your time. So if you're one of those players, this one is dedicated to you. Now this deck is by no stretch of the imagination particularly budget friendly, but you can take out a lot of the stable cards that make it a little bit more expensive to play. And to be honest with you, the vast majority of the deck is very budget friendly. There's just one or two cards that take it over that line. So if you're the kind of player who just wants to play your games, get them over and done with, you'll love this. Now as a quick note, if you're watching today's video and you're feeling inspired, maybe you'd like to pick up some Yu-Gi-Oh singles or even some Pokemon ones for that matter, you can go ahead and check out the channel sponsors, Jam Jam Cards UK. There will be a link in the description to their eBay store, and if you go ahead and use that, you'll get yourself a cheeky discount, courtesy of yours truly. But anyway, that is enough waffling on from me. Let's get stuck in to the deck profile. Okay, so let me first apologise if you can hear a whirring sound in the background. My laptop fans go absolutely fucking mental every time I start recording one of these videos. Hopefully, though, we can edit that out and it'll sound nice and silky smooth for you. Otherwise, it's business as usual for those of you who are accustomed to the channel and know exactly what this is all about. Today, we are taking a look at Danger Gren. That's right, the simple idea here is just to get this big red fucking boy out with massive attack and just yeet our opponent in one shot. Ideally, at least. Doesn't always work out that way. And again, that's exactly why this is a glass cannon. It's also hilarious when your opponent really doesn't have a way to deal with it. And you can see exactly what's coming. Or even better yet is when they somehow don't clock onto what you're doing and you set this and then they run into it and kill themselves. That's happened a few times. It's, it never, ever gets old. Again, this particular deck isn't super budget friendly. I mean, mostly because of lightning storms, quite honestly. Uh, but you could probably cut these out if you wanted to save a bit of money and run some other stuff. I mean, or, you know, you can just delete them from the deck profile like I do and then end up with 39 cards. There's supposed to be three here, obviously. And the people who skip ahead in this video, it's going to be absolutely hilarious because they're not going to understand exactly what has happened here. Brilliant. Now anyway, before I got rudely interrupted by my own incompetency and deleted my fucking lightning storm out of the deck, on to the deck profile. So, Danger Bigfoot, just a couple of copies of these. Uh, it's it's Bigfoot. I mean, mostly we care about using it off trading, getting the extra draw. I mean, obviously the utility of popping cards occasionally comes up, but he's also a really big fucking boy, and that's always a nice touch anyway. He's a level 8. It's not, I guess, you know what, I should probably give him a bit more credit. He's kind of cool. Um, you could probably run more if you wanted to, and, you know, maybe cut lightning storms or whatever, and run more dangers but honestly i think there's plenty in here uh thunderbirds pretty much the same thing of course popping a set card on the field is always a nice touch of course it's level eight it's a dark so you can allure it off it can make rank eights it can do all the fun stuff that dangers do ogopogo is here basically just to send your spell card from the deck if it does get summoned but otherwise it's just a level eight that gets a body on board and then of course you can go into rank eights and go off from there Nessie's at one because, well, we only have access to one copy, so one is all we're going to play. Triple copies are Mothman, arguably the best one outside of the ones that are limited, so yeah, maxing out on these is always a good choice. Double copies of Chupacabra. This could be cut down to one if you wanted to add more of one of the bigger boys, but I think two works quite nicely. Being able to reborn them out of the grave and then going to rank eight plays a little bit easier, always a nice touch. And then one of each of the other... Ones that are limited to one, uh, yeah, I mean, I don't really need to elaborate on this. I mean, to be honest with you, you could probably even cut these and just max out on the eights if you really wanted to. Uh, I just like having the extra names and the fact that it feels a bit weird playing three of either of these always just, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, it's up to you. You guys do whatever the fuck you like, I guess. 
But yeah, anyway, one of each of those seems perfectly fine. We're running a couple of copies of Gizmek Orochi. It's not the worst thing to open in the world, but I really can't justify a third one in here. But this is a really, really cool card. Of course, it can help protect you. It can long you out in the game. The amount of times you'll do this and you'll banish, you'll end up with like two cards left in your deck, and then you realize you've still got a Gren in there. And it happens, and it's amazing every time it does. This can also help remove pesky cards on the field, which is always nice, because then you can go ahead and yeet them with the big red motherfucker himself. Triple copies of Gren, mandatory in any any Gren Marju deck, obviously. Uh, he's a big fucking boy. I really don't need to talk about this. Running double copies of Eater of Millions again because there's enough space for more. You could run a bigger deck if you really wanted to. I mean, you're only going to end up banishing more cards, so who really cares? But... Um, you know, if you wanted to, you could run a bigger deck, and of course you could add an extra copy of this, you could max out on all the fucking dangers and go absolutely mental. Uh, I think the 40 card build works quite nicely for me in testing. Uh, Ear of Millions, though, really, really strong card. It's, you'll be surprised how good this is actually dealing with your opponent's board, and a lot of people really underestimate it, and then they realise, and then it fucking ruins their day. It's great, I love it. Run a single copy of Blackwing Zephyros, the Elite. This is, of course, a balance danger back to your hand for a free body on board. You can make free Link material, can make a rank 4 if you want to run some more of those. Uh, he's dark, he's... yeah, he's just... he's he does things. He's good. And I'm running the mandatory package for Dragoon. Uh, actually, this is in here just so you can special summon two dangers, tribute him off, and then attack with Dark Magician when there's no monsters left on the field. Believe it or not, there are danger cards that are outside of the monsters. There's a spell card here, which is actually pretty good. Being able to bounce two cards on the field, one of which will be one of your dangers, potentially one of your opponents as well, is always a nice touch. But the fact that you can discard a danger to then place this on the bottom of the deck and then draw a card, of course, being able to get your dangers effect off with that as well, is actually really fucking good and really underutilized this is a must-have card in this deck at least for me triple trading this is of course because we run so many level eights it's just so free dumping like a gizmek or dumping a danger off this draw two cards pop a card draw two cards you know get a free body on board it's, it's just great i fucking love it uh triple trading mandatory in this deck no question about it Triple copies of Pot of Desires. Banishing 10 from your main deck seems pretty fucking nice to me. Uh, and then you get to draw two cards because nobody ever fucking stops it. It's fantastic. It's also super budget friendly, which is a nice touch if you are looking to run this on a budget. Triple copies of Lore because banishing stuff really doesn't fucking matter in this deck. But digging deep really does. You want to shoot your opponent out of the game as quickly as possible. And digging deep is the best way to do that. You really don't want to wait around. You don't want to get into the grind game. It doesn't usually end well for this deck. Although it does occasionally come up where, like I say, your last card you'll draw out your deck is a fucking Gren and it's hilarious. But that's besides the point. Overall, that's uh, not statistically likely. So a lot of darkness is just going to help us dig that bit deeper. Red Eyes Fusion because Dragoon's a thing. Double copies of Lightning Storm because usually we're going to go second. And if you can yeet your op opponent's back row, that's always fucking hilarious. And for much that same reason, we have Harpy's Feather Duster in here. There's a lot more back row decks at the moment floating around. Certainly has been over the last couple of formats at least. And so this can help you get over the line a little bit easier. Foolish Barrel usually is just going to try and send you Zephyros, but you can put Gizmek Orochi in there as well. Either of those are usually good targets. Or of course, if you're in a situation where you've seen your Red Eyes Fusion, but you've got one of these two motherfuckers in here, you can just thin out your deck or something like that. I don't know, whatever you like. And then we have Red Gek in here because uh, I, I, it's a big fucking lightning bolt and it looks really cool. Uh, just being able to eat your opponent's board, especially if they have annoying monsters that you don't want in the way when you want to one-shot them. This can help you get there. This is one of those decks where you can really get away with running this. But again, if you don't want to, you can just delete it like me and then have a 38-card deck. And then we move on to the extra deck. Rank 8s for days. We have uh, Galaxy Boy. We have Dingesu. We have Sanafond. Uh, these are probably three of the better ones to have access to. So, yeah, run these. Uh, you know, or you can just delete them. This is what happens when I use a mouse from distance. It really doesn't end well. We have a single copy of Abyss Dweller because it's the best rank for basically in the game. Uh, so yeah, we need to run it. Uh, a single copy of Predaplab Vert Anaconda. This is for Dragoon. We have IP Mascarena because it's Mascarena. We have our interrupts that go with Mascarena because we can. We have a single copy of Curious because he's easy enough to make. And of course, from there, you can go ahead and dump, well, whatever you feel like. We have a single copy of Trisbana because back row is bullshit and you want to get rid of it as easy as possible. Uh, Zeroboros because beefing up your fucking Grand Marju is hilarious. Uh, Top Logic Bomber because, you know, yeeting the field is always good. Sayuja because we can easily make it and dig deep, and especially if our opponent definitely doesn't have an Ibiru or we're not scared of it anyway. 
This card is extra fucking hilarious. We have a single copy of Appaloosa because it's one of the best Link 4s in the game. And again, we're running this on a budget, so keep in mind that you could run Axis Code in here if you really wanted to. You can even run Boral Sword, although I think uh, Boral Sword falls by the wayside when you've got Grandmarju in your hand. But there you go. And then, of course, we have Dragoon to round off the entire extra deck. This just gives you the ability to play going first, which normally this deck can be a little bit lackluster at doing. Of course, normally you'll side for that, but this can be a really good option. Of course, some decks just can't play through this single interrupt, and it can win you three games. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is all for today's video. By virtue of the fact that you made it this far, hopefully you've enjoyed it enough to hit subscribe, or at least hate it enough that you couldn't possibly look away. You are, however, a rare statistic in that you're a loser enough to have made it all the way to the very end, even to this point where I'm just talking absolute shit. Not that that's not what I do for the whole video anyway, but that's besides the point. Seriously, though, I do appreciate you making it this far into the video, and hopefully you'll be joining me for more of those by making sure that you've hit subscribe and the notification bell to make sure that you don't miss out on any content in future. Now it is worth noting that this isn't the only kind of content we do on the channel, however we are a bit limited at the moment due to the thing that's going on in the world, there's locked down all of our locals and I can't mention it without getting demonetized. However over time normal service is going to resume, you're going to see a lot more how to play videos, a lot more combo tutorials, a lot more face to face deck profiles which are way better than this shit that I'm doing at the moment. We're going to see locals vlogs return, we're going to see event vlogs when we get out to them bad boys again. Lord knows I need a regional in my life right now. I'd sell even for a shitty little one. We're all just touching each other and getting all sway and manky. And all the stinky motherfuckers sweat and tryhards are all there. I could deal with all them right now. We just need a regional in my life. Seriously though, I just want to go play with the boys. I want to go eat Nando's with the boys. I want to get a pint with the boys. I want an X4 drop with the boys. Seriously though, if you're watching today's content and there is something that you'd like to see more of, something that you wouldn't like to see anymore, something that you absolutely fucking hate, something that you've got in mind that you think would be a perfect fit for this channel, go ahead and reach out and let me know. There are links down in the description to all of my social media accounts so you can go ahead and get in contact with me. I'm not exactly hard to find out there anyway, but that's all in there for you anyway. But anyway, that's enough of your time being wasted. Thank you very much for coming along. I do appreciate you being here and hopefully I'll see you in the next one. This content is brought to you in association with my buddies over at Jam Jam Cards UK. You can find the links to the eBay store and the Facebook page in the description.